me officially welcome you to uh, this orientation session of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship uh, Training Portal. This is a mission and an effort that has been a long time coming, and I want to thank our representative from headquarters, who I will introduce in just a moment, for his steadfastness and dedication. We've been working on this literally for almost uh, two years now, pulling it together, making sure that the curriculum is appropriate, available, and engaging for you, our students. I'll be talking a bit more about that in the uh, coming minutes, but I wanna pause ever so briefly and uh, introduce to you those who may not know Bishop Lionel Ketchens, who is a, a paradigm shifter in our fellowship. He serves in administration. He is the official representative and voice of headquarters tonight. And I did not want to launch this conversation with you about what we are intending, what we have designed and what we are making available independent of headquarters. I think it is very, very important in a day and time when there is so much fraudulent activity going on in the body of Christ. It is important that you know and understand that uh, what you're hearing, what you're listening to, what you have been approached with uh, is an official uh, endeavor and effort on the part of our fellowship. And so I certainly want to uh, acknowledge our presiding bishop in the person of Bishop Joseph Walker, our founding bishop in the person of Bishop Paul S. Morton, and as the historian of the fellowship and the individual who has been charged with theological studies and Episcopal training, I am delighted to have this opportunity, this occasion to talk to you about what I think is an exciting endeavor on the part of our fellowship. It has been the heart of our presiding bishop that we would have a place virtually and online where individuals who serve in a variety of capacities in our fellowship have digital space and place where they could come and be formally and officially trained to do those things that they have been assigned to do, to do those things that they have been charged to do, and to expand their own skill set and knowledge base. And toward that end, we have assembled an exciting curriculum that I'm anxious to share with you and talk to you about, even the benefits and what it leads to, and the scholastic opportunities that's being made available to you by the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. However, prior to me delving into any of that material, I want to pause, acknowledge Bishop Lionel Ketchens and invite him to come and talk to you officially as the voice of the fellowship and the representative of our uh, Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. Uh, he has uh, done so much to help facilitate what it is that you're seeing, what it is that you're experiencing. And so he brings a unique perspective. Now, he does have another meeting that he has to rush off to, and we certainly excuse him, but we are delighted and indebted to him for taking the time to greet you and saying hello to you this evening. Bishop Ketchens. Thank you so much, Bishop Luter. I honor you, sir, as being one of our founding fathers. Um, I remember the Bishop Andy Luter with black hair. That's how far I'll, I'll go back <laughs> when he was one of the dancing bishops. <laughs> so I, I, I truly honor him tonight. What a wealth of knowledge we have. We're blessed to have someone of his great magnitude who have served our fellowship, who has been an anchor to us. Tonight, I greet you as the chief of staff of our international headquarters office, um, also serving as state bishop of Georgia. If you've been in full gospel a long time, you know you do dual roles. Um, <laughs> Bishop Luther had about three roles himself. Um, but listen, I'm excited about this teachable um, mechanism because this has been a heartbeat, a vision of Bishop Luther to bring a space where full gospel can come together and live, uh, live in the virtual space, education, um, various, our history, DOP, men, women, administration, um, Bishop Luda has brought this program. This has been his baby, his brainchild, and he has fought hard for it. And tonight is the evidence of the hard work that he has put behind the scenes to bring to full gospel this program where great teaching can go forth. Isn't it amazing? You know, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, when full gospel started, we would have never dreamed that we would have this mechanism to share 
of the gospel to share, of the history to share, full gospel, and to share it not only to you, but through you, share it to the world. So thank you for being a part of this. This is truly been um, punctuated um, by our presiding bishop, Bishop Joseph W. Walker III. He has been excited about it. He has been pushing. And so I want you to know this is authentic. So tell other people about it. Get them excited as you are excited because as um, our third presiding bishop always says, excitement breeds excitement. So with you, you are the inauguration of Teachable and nobody, I mean nobody, can take that from you because you can say, I was a part of the initiation of the Teachable program. So 20 years from now, you can always say, I was a part of getting it started. So thank you so much for being involved. Thank you so much for, for participation. My prayer is that you will open your mind, your hearts, and your ears where you can hear the download of God's great wisdom through the voice of Bishop Andy Luder. God bless you. We love you. Thank you, Bishop Luder, for this time. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very, very much. And we appreciate you. And uh, certainly we are indebted to you for the support and the prayers that you have given this endeavor to make it available to and to uh, maximize its opportunity and its visibility within the ranks of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. Well, beloved, I am anxious to jump into a variety of areas that I want to share with you that I know that you very well may have questions. And I do want to leave time at the close of my presentation to uh, open the microphones so that you can ask those pertinent and pressing questions that you have relative to this program. Uh, I am delighted to say that over 120 individuals have already registered in our Teachable platform. Let me say that again. Over 120 individuals like yourself have registered on our Teachable platform. Now, the Teachable platform does require a two-step process. And so there is the registration that uh, gives you a username and a password and makes you part of our full gospel teaching family. And then the second stage, and what I really specifically want to talk to you about tonight, is the enrollment in the various courses that we have available. We have assembled 13 online courses that's currently available for your consumption. And so uh, one of the things that I want to do is to gently nudge those of you who have taken the sec first step, which is to register with our platform. You have a username, you have a password, you can get to our Teachable platform. Uh, I want to gently nudge you to consider one of our courses. But even beyond that, we have something a bit more specific that we want to talk to you about tonight. And that is a 10 course program. The th part of the 13 courses is a 10 course curriculum that we have labeled the licentiate in theological studies, a licentiate in theological studies. And uh, that is a 10 course program that will take place over the course of the next year. And as you perhaps heard me talk to Bishop Ketchings about earlier, uh, we're going to walk you through that. We will have monthly class reviews, coming together, fellowship, time of discussion. And there will be time uh, each month where you will go through a self-accelerated series of video lectures. You will um, uh, master that material. Each of the courses have a battery of questions that will measure your retention of the material that's been presented to you over the course of that month. And then at the end of those 10 months, as we approach May and June of next year, those of you who complete that will be invited to participate in our graduation program that will be at our full gospel conference on next year. Now, from what I understand, we've yet to decide where we're going next year. We know we're going to New Orleans this year, but we've yet to decide where we're going next year. But wherever that is, if it's Atlanta, if it's Memphis, if it's um, Nashville, wherever we go, the very first 
session that we have will be our graduation ceremony session. And those of you who have completed these 10 courses, and I'm going to show you what those courses are so that you're fully familiar with that. Those of you who complete that uh, and earn the licentiate award will be invited to come to the meeting place where we will be next year and walk across the stage and receive your award from our founding bishop and our presiding bishop. And we're really excited about that. I was saying to Bishop Ketchens many, many years ago, 25 years ago, I put together a uh, online curriculum that we used within Full Gospel and uh, while the College of Elders and Christian Education and other departments have followed behind and have used that time and that space for their graduation ceremonies, uh, we have the distinction of having started that over 25 years ago. And so we're going to resume and return to our first works in that regard. And you who complete this program over the course of these next several months will be recognized and will be awarded that licentiate award that we're going to make available. So if you have questions about what this leads to, because it is a meaningful investment in yourself, um, I want to be real clear in terms of what the, what, the, what the assets are and what the benefits are. And so again, it is a 10 course curriculum and there are multiple ways for you to um, uh, meet the enrollment responsibility that is attached to this. There is a uh, one-time fee that you can pay that includes a significant discount on the coursework, or you can, for those who would prefer, go at it on a month-to-month -month basis. And uh, both of those options are available to you. If you give me a minute, I am going to share with you the contents of our licentiate program. We're actually going to begin that, beloved, in the month of September. So we're taking June, July, and August to market this, to make sure that everybody is aware of it. And then in September, we will have monthly meetings, just like we're doing right now. We will have a monthly assembling of ourselves coming together to go over the material that's been covered that month. Uh, we're starting with our course, and I'll get into this in a little more detail in just a moment, but we're starting with our course in the beginning. Do you know it's been over 30 years that the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship has been in existence? And many people do not know the groundwork, the beginnings, the origin, the roots of our fellowship. And we have put together an exciting course entitled In the Beginning that walks you through the vision of Bishop Morton, the coming together of those first 12 uh, founding fathers, our first fellowship conference that took place in the Superdome uh, in New Orleans, the development, the elaboration, the emergence of various departments within the fellowship. We want to give you a firm, strong foundation as to where we have come from. And if you have any appreciation for the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship and how the Lord has blessed this fellowship over the period of the last 30 years, what better place to start than in the beginning. And so that's where we're going to begin in September. Now, I know there's a little bit of time between now and September. And so that time will not be wasted between now and then. There are a series of uh, mini courses and uh, uh, smaller scholastic exercises that we will be giving to you between now and September. All of that is not, there's no additional cost for that. That's a part of your registration. It is a part of your enrollment. And uh, I know that you're going to enjoy it. Uh, I have a series entitled This Week, watch this beloved, This Week in Church History, where I look at the 2000 year history of the church in general, and I identify some major moment in the life and the history of the church. And I take maybe four minutes, five minutes to share with you the specifics of that 
historical event. So that by the time you we come together in September, you will have already accumulated a goodly amount of information and material on our background. But we don't only talk about history, we also talk about uh, the various areas of our fellowship. We talk about doctrine. What is it that we believe? What makes us full gospel Baptists? We will uh, deal with the distinctives of the full gospel Baptist church fellowship. We will look at the hybrid theological posture of our fellowship. You know, we use a term that's called Bapticostal. Uh, that means that we're Calvinistic uh, in our background and theological basis, but then we're also Wesleyan. And so we'll talk about the tension between Wesleyanism and Calvinism and how we in the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship have merged those two to come up with something that is truly unique in the body of Christ. Uh, I have no doubt that the information that we have assembled for you is going to benefit you great. So, beloved, if you look at the screen, you'll see uh, this is our licentiate in sacred theology. It is a series of courses provided by the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. It operates under our Office of Theological Studies. And let me say this, and I know that this may not be in your future per se, but a goodly amount of the material that we share in this curriculum, this year-long curriculum, is the same material that uh, we require of our bishops as they prepare themselves and equip themselves for church leadership as princes and princesses in the Lord's church. Uh, Bishop Ketchins can tell you that it is a rigorous and a most rewarding experience, and uh, he has gone through a goodly amount of this material. But if you allow me just to kind of move down, as I talk to you about, um, there are two options available. You can either pay a one-time fee uh, with a discount, or you can do this on a monthly basis. Both options are available to you, either one-time fee or a monthly amount that uh, you would that you would incur. Now, <clears throat> again, and I'm going to give you this um, this link, but you can see it is available here: fullgospel.teachable.com forward slash p as in Peter forward slash again licentiate. I'm going to put that in the, uh, or somebody could help me by copying this. Um, URL and placing it in the chat room so that all can see. Let me see if I can do that for everybody real fast. I'll make it available before the uh, end of the session. So that's the enrollment opportunity. Then there are some common questions that are answered here on the home page. And then here's what's most exciting. Here are the 10 different courses that you will be taking over the course of this next year. 10 courses that will be available to you over the next 10 months. Now, uh, again, we have 13 courses and we are expanding that monthly. So if perhaps there is a course that you see listed here that you are perhaps not as interested in as one of the other courses, you will be able to uh, switch out one of those courses. And so we don't lock you in. These are the courses that we feel would be most meaningful, most beneficial, but you can switch out any of these courses for one of our other courses or one of our future courses that we will be posting online so that you have some uh, flexibility. We're very lenient here. What's important to us is that you have an opportunity to learn as much as you want to learn and learn as much as you need to learn to do those things that are a part of your experience in the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. So let me kind of go through these and give you a quick overview so you have both an understanding and an appreciation of the immense amount of time and research that has gone into uh, 
the composition of these various courses. You see here, uh, and this is not necessarily the order in which they're taught. I'll go over with you uh, the order in which the courses are taught, but this is how they're just kind of listed on the home page of this uh, of this bundle. Gospel music's in, influence on American culture. We go all the way back to the beginning to those uh, work songs, those um, slave songs, those uh, inspirational songs, all the way up <coughs> through hymns and then modern gospel music. We take a 250 year survey of music in the black church where it came from spirituals. We go everything from spirituals to modern contemporary gospel music. And uh, we have some of the uh, best scholars in the country who talk extensively about African-American sacred music. And that course is available. Uh, then we have a course, and this is one of our early courses I mentioned to you that we start with in the beginning. But just beyond in the beginning, we have a course entitled Why Church History is important. Beloved, please get this, understand this. And that is that um, whoever does not know their history is forced to repeat it. And you can't know where you're going until you first know where you've been. And so we take time in this course. It is a month long study. There are a variety of video lectures that you will be given and that you will go over and that we'll come together, talk about, review, and discuss why church history, <coughs> why church history is important. And we give you a fundamental rudimentary understanding of church history as a point of reference, because here's the reality. Beloved, there is nothing, let me say this again, there is nothing that is happening or going on in the church that has not gone on before. Now, I know that some things that we come in contact with, we think it's unique. We think it is novel. We think it is new. But the reality is, whether it is the dwindled attendance in our church buildings right now, or whether it's the great revival movements that we saw in the 80s and 90s, the truth of the matter is that when we surveyed the 2000 plus year history of the church, everything that we have seen, are seeing, or even will see in the future has already taken place in the corridors of church history. And so the more you understand and the more you know church history, the better you can plot the course of your future because there's nothing new under the sun. Wars and rumors of wars. Uh, the, the tension between church and state, the rivalry between denominations and reformations, all of that is part of this 2000 year history of the church. And one of the things that I'm anxious to do is help you to see and understand that what we're going through, we have already watched this, we've already gone through it before. And here is the reality, beloved. The reality is that if the Lord sustained us to get through it the last time, he will sustain us to get through it this time. Right now, we're all nervous. We're all undone. We're unsettled because of the mass murder in Buffalo, New York, here in my state of New York, and then the subsequent, the subsequent killing of children in, in Uvalda, Texas. Uh, these are horrific events. And when we look back over the 2,000-year history, we see genocide. We see massive um, slaughter of people in a variety of places. And just like God helped the church to get through uh, those moments of tension and crises and calamity in the past, God is going to be with us even in this hour. And even this pandemic that we've just come through and that we're still experiencing. Uh, there was a Spanish flu in 1919. Uh, there was the Black Plague in the 1300s and the 1400s that wiped out one third of the population in the entire continent of Europe. And so what I'm saying is that pandemics, disease, death, 
all of these things have happened in the past in the history of the church. And that's why we're going to talk about why church history is important. And then right alongside of that, we're going to talk about the early church fathers, because I know you're all familiar with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the Apostle Paul, and the Apostle Peter, and David, and Solomon, and so many characters that we find in the Bible. But beloved, here is the reality. 90%, get what I'm saying now, 90% of what we believe was determined not by the characters that we find in the Bible, but by the individuals who lived after the Bible was officially written. So we look at names like Eusebius and Tertullian. We look at modern thinkers like Schleiermacher and Tillich and uh, Kierkegaard, so many individuals. And there are there's a set of early church fathers, Ignatius, again, Tertullian, Clement, who really helped to formulate what it is that we believe as Christians today. And so I'm anxious to share with you some of the basic fundamental teachings of those church fathers. And then we wanna look at the doctrines of the Bible. What is it that we believe? I've already mentioned in the beginning, uh, that is a course that looks at the very roots of the full gospel Baptist church fellowship. And then an item that's very close to my heart, what is the policy manual? of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. Where did we come from? What is our governing document? What determines not only what we believe, but what our policies are? We have a month long course in that particular area. And then I'm sure that you will appreciate these next few courses. Let me begin with men's ministry. Uh, men's ministry has a very significant history in the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. This course is taught by the individuals who started the men's ministry. So we go back uh, to those individuals who were the architects and the pioneers of the men's ministry, uh, Charles Middleton, uh, along with the most recent head of our ministry is, uh, are the individuals who teach that particular course. And then the word apologetics, let me get, let me share this with you. Apologetics does not mean an apology or saying I'm sorry, but it is the rigorous, mostly scholastic defense of what the church believes. And so we spend an entire month going over the apologetics of the church. What have been uh, the moments that have challenged the church with blasphemy and heresy? And how did the church respond to that? And then more importantly, how did the church defend itself against false teachers and individuals who were not authentic or operated with integrity in the body of Christ? And then, of course, that I am very, very proud of, the course is entitled Shattering the Stained Glass Ceiling, Shattering the Stained Glass Ceiling. Now, the title of the course may not give a clear or accurate indication of what this course is about. One of the unique things, one of the unique items, beloved, about the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship has been its um, affirmation of women in ministry. Now, you know we are part of a Baptist tradition, and the older Baptist tradition did not include women, did not recognize women. Well, one of the things that makes the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship so unique is not only our affirmation, but our usage of women. Now, in the corporate world, it is said that when a woman can't go but so high, she bumps into a glass ceiling, that there is a glass ceiling in the corporate world. Well, in the church world, we like to say that that ceiling is not only glass, but it is a stained glass ceiling. And so this course entitled Shattering the Stained Glass Ceiling is a course on the usage and the affirmation of women in ministry in general. But beloved, we are one of the first reformations to promote and elevate women to the office of bishop. And so we have two of our inaugural female bishops who teach this course. 
Bishop Cheryl Brown out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and Bishop Aretha Morton out of Wilmington, Delaware. They come together and they teach this magnificent course entitled Shattering the Stained Glass Ceiling. And they give explanation and they give voice to what it was like to be a female in church leadership amidst, quote unquote, the old boys club, how they navigated the snares and the traps that were attached to that experience and how they prospered and how they found success. And then how wherever you are, not allowing your gender to become an obstacle to where God is taking you and how God is using you. This is one of the most popular courses that we have, and it is entitled Shattering the Stained Glass Ceiling. And then the history of the Daughters of Promise. I know it is listed here as the women's department. That's kind of an older term that's used primarily in Baptist circles, <coughs> in Baptist circles, but uh, uh, overseer. Deborah Morton has assembled some of the original women who came to Full Gospel and put together the Daughters of Promise. And she talks about, and she, and uh, along with five other leading women who were the original pioneers of this paradigm, teach this course on the history and the role of women, not only in the Lord's Church, but in the full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. So for those of you who have an anxiety or an appetite for understanding how did women get to where they are, the treatment of women in the full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship is altogether different than how women are treated in other reformations. They've always been honored. honored. They've always been respected. They've always been revered. Uh, they were not put off in a corner, but they would literally, some of you who have some longevity, know that the wives would come in with the bishops and they were visible and they were out front. And so uh, overseer Deborah Norton, along with a panel of women who have been here from the beginning, talk extensively about the role of women in the fellowship. And so those are the 10 courses <coughs> that we have made as a part of the first year licentiate program. Those are the 10 courses that's part of the licentiate program. Now, if I go here very, very quickly, I'm just going to show you very, very quickly, as, as I mentioned to you, there are there are currently 13, I'm trying to find them here now, uh, There are currently 13 courses that we have available, and you see them all here. Uh, in the beginning, these are the 10 that I talked about, but we have course on Be Anxious for Nothing. We have courses on District Overseer Training, the History of the Daughters of Promise. I talked about that. Um, the Job of Christian Education. Now, let me say this uh, we have two tracks. Now, this bundle that I've just talked about is in addition to two other tracks that we have available. If you are an overseer, a district overseer, we have a specific course for you as a training mechanism for district overseers. By September, if you are a state overseer, we have a course specifically to train state overseers. We have an additional course that's not listed here, but if you are an administrator, a church administrator, we have a course just for ministry administrators, those who work in leadership on the local level, on the district level, on the state level, and even on the international level. 
uh, today, earlier today, we just finished recording the courses, the video lectures for those of you who may be general overseers or um, auxiliary bishops. We have a specific training course for those who are auxiliary bishops and those who are general overseers. Every month we are adding to this list so that there is always something available, something attractive for you to study. That mm -hmm. is the link to our licentiate program. Uh, I am recording our meeting tonight and I'll be sending you this video in case you missed any portion of our discussion tonight. I will include with the video that I send you or the video link that I send you, the link to the licentiate program. Again, we will be meeting on the Thursday after the first Sunday, the Thursday after the first Sunday of every month to go over the material of that preceding month. And so you'll study, you'll watch the video lectures, you'll, you'll answer the questions, and then we'll all come together on that Thursday following the first Sunday, and we'll have a roundtable class review and session to make sure that you have gotten out of that course everything that was intended and designed for that course. Anybody else want to share with us? Anybody else have a question or uh, observation that you would like to know this evening? Again, I'm very grateful for your time and your attention tonight. Yes, Bishop Luter, for yes. the licentiate, um, you uh, you mentioned that there would be a graduation. How many courses are required for that graduation? Excellent question. There are 10 courses in the licentiate program. So we'll start in September, and every month you will complete an additional course so that by May of 2023, June at the latest, you will have completed all 10 courses and will therefore be eligible to participate and receive your licentiate uh, at our uh, full gospel conference in 2023. Ten now, are, are those courses separate to the ones that you presented tonight or they or you have to you take the classes out of that? Those courses, those are the, what, what I discussed with you tonight are the 10 courses that's part of the licentiate program. Okay. Yeah, the, the courses that I talked about tonight are the courses in the licentiate program. Now, there are, there are 10 courses in the licentiate program, but we have 13 courses available and we're adding to that every week. So if there's a particular course that you think you might enjoy, more so than one of the 10 courses that's in the licentiate program, we do allow you to substitute one of the newer courses that's either uh, currently available or will become available for the course that's in the 10 course curriculum. So there's but the requirement, But the requirement is that you complete 10 courses. That's correct, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That you complete 10 Thank courses. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. So again, beloved, if you take a look at the chat room, there is the, um, the link to our licentiate program. I am hopeful and prayerful that all of you will take advantage, that you will go and choose one of those options, either the one-time uh, annual payment or the monthly payment, whatever works better for you, whatever's more convenient and more comfortable for you. That's what we... Uh, encourage you to do. But as you can see, there is a wealth of material and information that we have put together for you and that we're anxious to share with you. And I can't wait for September to get here. And I'm so anxious until again, between now and then, there's uh, a number of mini courses and uh, exercises that I will be sending those of you who enroll uh, to keep you engaged and to uh, to give you a sneak preview of the kind of material and the depth of the material that we will be studying over the course of the next year. Can I just take a quick survey just so that we kind of know what we're doing and the direction that we're going? Um, 
Do we have anyone who at this juncture uh, is uh, knows that they will be uh, part of our class and looking forward to graduation in 2023 uh, because of your licentiate? If you can just kind of come off a of mute real fast and let me know just so that I can give to our presiding bishop and our founding bishop some indication of how this platform and this paradigm is doing. I'm, I'm interested, Stephanie Reed from Brooklyn, New York. Bless you, Sister yes. Stephanie. I'm signing up, Doc, I'm signing up. Bishop, you got me, I'm coming. Bless you, bless you, Minister. I've, um, already, I've already signed up. Elder, is that Elder G? No, that's Stephanie. Stephanie, okay, bless you. Thank you for doing so. Thank you for doing I will be, so. Bishop, I will be signing up also. This is, that's Elder G. Yes, sir. Oh, bless you, sir. Happy to have you, happy to have you. Bishop. Yes, sir. Melvin Barnes, I will be signing up. Bless you, bless you, Elder Melvin. Bishop, I'll be signing up as well. Oh, bless you, Elder, bless you. Anyone else? Bishop Wanda Smith, I'll be signing up also. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Smith. Well, listen, one of the things that you, that would be of extraordinary assistance to me, uh, one person can't get all of the information out. But if I could appoint all of you to be ambassadors of this program, and if you would simply share with others the opportunity that's here, share with them the link. Uh, let me say God loves you. We love you. We look forward to seeing you soon. Uh, go in peace. Go in joy. Go in love, go in happiness, but the author of the same goes with you. God bless you. Amen.